Hey everyone, it's Jason. For this project, I'm making a bottle diver from a disposable tube of eye drops and some small copper wire. These are the kind of drops you might find in a first aid kit. After using the drops to lube my eyes, I squeeze out the rest of the liquid from the tube. With the eyedropper empty, I trim off the big tab at the top and trim any sharp edges. I poke two holes in the sides near the dropper opening using a stick pin or small nail. Then I take a four inch piece of copper wire and push one end through the first hole and out the second. Now it's important that the holes I made are small enough to be airtight once the wire is inserted. This wire will form the two legs and I want each of them to be about a half an inch long. I measure and bend the copper wire over on itself twice and leave a small tail. I then take a three inch piece of wire and slide half of it through next to the bend. After folding this wire in half, I begin to wrap it around, working the wire up the leg. I do the same to the other half of the wire until both reach the top. Once the leg is wrapped, I trim the excess and flatten down the ends. I also trim the tail piece and loop it to make it resemble the diver's boot. I slide the newly formed leg close to the body and start the other leg. I begin to fold the copper on this side as exactly as I did with the first and making the limbs in this way gives more of an appearance of an old salvage diver suit. Using copper wire to make the limbs not only serves as good counterweight but it won't rust from being submerged. Plus I think the copper color provides a good look for the suit. Now I poke two more holes in the dropper. One in the center of one side and the other hole on the opposite side. Again, I take a four inch piece of copper wire and push it into the first hole and holding the wire steady with a pair of pliers, I push it out the hole on the other side. This wire will be used to form the arms. I measure and bend the wire so the arm will be one quarter of an inch in length. Using another piece of wire, I slide it through and wind it up the arm in the same way I wrap the legs. Once the arm is wrapped, I trim and loop the wire tail, this time resembling a diver's glove. Then I slide the arm close to the body and bend the wire for the second arm in the same way. Once all the limbs are complete, it's time to finish detailing the suit. I use a permanent marker to trace out a helmet window. Then I darken the joining section of the legs to resemble some diving pants and a weight belt. Now it's time to calibrate how my diver floats. Initially, my diver was a bit too heavy, so I had to trim some of the weight by cutting off his gloves. Sorry, diver. If the diver had been too buoyant, I would have simply suctioned some water into the body. The goal is for the diver to just barely float at the surface of the water. For my diver's tank, I found a clear tea bottle that works really well once the labels are removed. For my test dive, I dropped the little diver into the bottle and closed the lid tightly. When I squeeze the bottle with my thumb, the diver should head towards the bottom, and he does. And with the right amount of pressure, I maintain precise control. And thanks to the background my daughter sketched, I've given my diver an undersea world to explore. So I hope you enjoyed this project. If so, please hit the like button, or better yet, share this video with your friends. I certainly appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, and I will always do my best to keep more projects rolling out and keeping them creative. And also you can get more details to this and other stuff by going to www.inventonthespot.com. See you next time.